say that one man's junk is another man's treasure, and some creatures also cherish a cache of trash. We're counting down the top 10 most extreme crazy collectors in the animal kingdom to find the most obsessive hoarder. Discover that exploring nature's trash cans can be fun when crazy collectors are taken to the most extreme. Earth is a planet of extremes. Extreme places. And extreme animals. But some animals are more extreme than others. Join us as we count down to find the most unusual and the most extraordinary on Animal Planet's The Most Extreme. Number 10. Some humans stockpile the strangest objects and turn them into treasures. For most people, it's just a hobby, but others see it as potentially lucrative. That's why some people collect coins. This 1933 Double Eagle gold piece is worth a lot more than its original $20 value. In 2002, it became the world's most expensive coin when it was auctioned for seven and a half million dollars. No wonder coins are a popular collectible for humans and our first contender. Flying in to number 10 in the countdown is the magpie. This cheeky thief has an eye for collecting anything slightly shiny, including bottle caps, bits of foil, and coins. While some researchers believe magpies see the shining objects as potential food, others suggest a nest full of knickknacks may help the magpie attract a potential mate. Whatever the reason, these feathered bandits are so famous for collecting bright baubles that the bird's name is now used to describe humans with similar tendencies. And one of them lives in Pearsonville, California. Lucy Pearson doesn't collect coins, but hubcaps. She's been stockpiling them for more than 40 years and has turned the town she founded into the hubcap capital of the world. Lucy estimates she owns more than 200,000 hubcaps, reflecting an obsession that her late husband once likened to madness. Some people say, well, which one do you like better, you know? And I really don't know, because I like all of them, you know? I wash this one up, and I say, oh, I sure do like that one. And, and then pretty soon I wash another one up. Well, I like this one, too, so I really don't know which one I like better. While Lucy Pearson only has eyes for hubcaps, magpies are far less fussy. They collect all kinds of human objects, which is why some golfers are worried about getting a birdie on this hole. Some researchers believe young birds may collect golf balls because they resemble dimpled eggs. They bury the balls, perhaps in the hope they can eat them later. Magpies may seem a little mad, but there are crazier kleptomaniacs coming up in the countdown.
Number nine. All around the world, farmers are experts at making hay. The dried grass is the perfect food for sustaining livestock during long winter months. However, humans are not the only ones making hay when the sun shines. High on the stony slopes of the Rocky Mountains, summer is short. Soon the grass will be buried deep under snow, which is why our next contender has to collect like crazy to store enough food for winter. It's the pika, a small furry cousin of the rabbit. Unlike other small mammals living up here, the pika doesn't hibernate. When the snows come, it's wide awake and hungry, which is why in summer it collects grass. Lots of grass. It harvests succulent stalks, leaves, and blossoms from the neighboring meadows. Then, just like a human haymaker, the pika bundles them into a giant haystack to dry. Dried plants won't rot, so they're the perfect way to store food for winter. The pika is number nine in the countdown because it makes more than a dozen trips every hour to gather plant material for its haystack. Collecting can be risky business because a pika with a mouthful of food is a tempting target for hungry coyotes and eagles. It only stops working during the hottest part of the day, because if it continued its frantic collecting, it would run the risk of overheating inside its thick fur coat. It seems there's nothing crazy about this little collector. It's found the perfect way to stockpile enough food to survive the long winter. Using tunnels beneath the snow, the pika makes regular visits to its collection of dried grasses. While it may not sound very appetizing to us, compared to our next contender's collection, it's a gourmet feast. While our first two contenders had a passion for grass and golf balls, surely you'd have to be crazy to want to collect moose droppings. Number eight. Our countdown of the natural world's craziest collectors continues in a very unusual nest. Most people think birds lay their eggs high above the ground in a nest lined with soft feathers and moss. However, our next contender is no ordinary bird. Just ask biologists Jack Barkley and Lindsay Harmon. They're in San Jose, California, searching for a bird that builds a very unusual nest underground. <laughs> Hiding at number eight in the countdown is the burrowing owl, because it lines its underground nest with a collection of very strange objects. Well, we have a burrowing owl burrow here, and we find around it uh, molted feathers. The burrowing owls are molting this time of year. We also have a scattering of little bits of trash. They bring in all kinds of pieces of paper and foam rubber and other kinds of little bits of urban debris. Nobody's quite sure just why the burrowing owl is a garbage collector. But recently, scientists unraveled a smelly secret hidden inside the bird's nest. Off you go. The burrowing owl has a fondness for 
dung. It collects mammal manure, be it pieces of cow pat or dollops of bison dung. It's the male's job to bring home the feces, which the female shreds and plasters onto the tunnel walls and around the entrance to their burrow. It sounds disgusting, but it's the perfect lure for the owl's favorite insect meal, the dung beetle. These insects are always searching for feces because they use it as a source of food and a place to lay their eggs. So the owls go fishing using a dung lure. All they have to do is sit at the entrance to their burrow and wait for a dung beetle to come sniffing around. Then the owls just reel in a meal. Collecting mammal excrement really pays off for the burrowing owl and for one entrepreneurial biologist. The forests of New Hampshire are home to many big mammals, but seeing them can be difficult. Field biologist Chris Louie knows that often the best way to tell where an animal has been is to examine what it leaves behind. I've taught a number of college level courses on watching mammals and identifying their, their sign. It's helpful to carry somewhat of a bag of tricks. So uh, often I'll keep a collection of droppings in my pocket, bring them out and at an appropriate time, show folks um, this is a moose, this is a deer, other herbivores that we, that we have in the forest. I came home after a, a class and emptied my pockets out on the kitchen table. Then I noticed the two of them were kind of lined up and they looked like a matching set. And that's how Chris was inspired to turn excrement into earrings. In winter, moose droppings contain a lot of wood fibers which make them dense and firm. All you need to do is dry them out, apply some urethane, and you have truly unique jewelry. However, Chris's collection of excremental earrings would be of no interest to a burrowing owl. They need their dung collection nice and smelly to attract beetles for dinner. But if you think these birds are disgusting, there are equally revolting collections coming up in the countdown. While our last two contenders made a meal of their crazy collections, why would anybody want to stockpile one of the world's most poisonous spiders? Because their fangs are too fragile to pierce our skin. However, there's one spider you need to approach with caution because it can drive its fangs through your fingernail. And that's why you'd have to be crazy to collect funnel web spiders or work at the Australian Reptile Park. But biologist Mary Reyna has jars full of these bad-tempered aggressive spiders. That's because her job is to collect venom from one of Australia's most dangerous creepy crawlies. When provoked, venom drips from the funnel web's fangs. All you need is a steady hand and good nerves to draw the poison into a glass pipette. In the past 80 years, 18 people have died from funnel web bites. But now, thanks to spider milking, it's possible to harmlessly extract enough poison to create an anti-venom. Our next contender also collects spiders, or rather, kidnaps them. Buzzing in to number seven in the countdown is the mud dauber wasp. 
it's easy to see how it got its name. The female collects mouthfuls of mud and molds them into shape. Once dry, it forms a clay coffin, and the wasp heads off in search of a body. She's number seven in the countdown because she uses her venomous sting to collect spiders. After cramming the clay chamber with up to two dozen spiders, the wasp then lays a single egg inside the chamber and seals it with a clay lid. Eventually, her baby emerges and begins to feed on the kidnapped creepy crawlers. And what's truly horrifying is that the mud dauber's collection of spiders is still alive. In the time it takes her babies to develop, dead bodies would decay and rot. So the female only paralyzes her prey, leaving the larvae to feast on fresh flesh for three weeks before emerging from the chamber. The mud dauber wasp is not the only animal with a strange collection of nest chambers. But at least our next contender doesn't have to kill for its family. Number six. People have been collecting shells since the Stone Age. Seashell necklaces have been excavated in sites far from the ocean, which is evidence that even prehistoric collectors saw them as a tradable commodity. Our next contender is also an avid shell collector, but he lives in the waters of Africa's Lake Tanganyika. He's a freshwater fish called a cichlid. This lake is home to more than 250 different kinds of cichlid. So it's not surprising that each species has a unique way of attracting a mate. This flirtatious male has an obsession for shells. He's number six in the countdown because he collects empty snail shells. The more shells he collects, the more females he attracts. That's because these shells are not just pretty trinkets to impress the females. They're actually houses for his harem. The male may only be four inches long, but compared to his quarter of an inch mate, he's proportionately the biggest male in the world. She's so small she can lay her eggs inside the snail shell. However, female cichlids are not the only ones attracted to the male's stockpile of shells. Collecting shells is hard work, which is why some males prefer to steal from their neighbors. This isn't the only time that one of our crazy collectors comes under attack, as we'll see later in the countdown. Our last two contenders have had a thing for shells and spiders. But still to come is a collector who turned corn cobs, crockery, and concrete into... Number five. Our countdown of the natural world's craziest collectors continues in a stockpile of some of the most disgusting creatures on the planet. These shells are full of parasites. 
There are more than 30 million specimens in this reference collection stored at the U.S. National Parasite Collection in Washington, D.C., and many of them are worms. More than 100 species prey on humans. We can be infected by tapeworms, roundworms, pinworms, and hookworms. The scientists here are experts on worms, just like our next contender. But you won't find it in a laboratory. It's time to head back to the golf course to find the animal that's burrowed into number five in the countdown, the mole. These digging machines love eating earthworms. It's been estimated that a five ounce mole can eat 50 pounds of earthworms in a year. To make sure it never goes hungry, the mole collects worms to store in a special underground pantry. A bite to the head segment leaves the worms immobilized yet alive. One mole was recorded storing over 400 worms in an underground chamber. These paralyzed worms will end up inside a mole's stomach, which is why this gruesome stockpile is unlikely to last for more than a few days. However, not all collections in the countdown are short-lived. Still to come is a horde that was built thousands of years ago. Number four. These are acorns. And in the forests of America, they're the favorite food of our next crazy collector. Meet the aptly named acorn woodpecker. It's number four in the countdown because it collects vast numbers of these nuts to store for winter. The bird finds a storage hole for every acorn, and it's important that each one is placed in the right sized hole. A tight fit is essential to prevent the collection being stolen by squirrels or rival woodpeckers. Acorn woodpeckers live in family groups and store their nuts in just one tree. That can mean a lot of holes and a lot of acorns. Some collections contain more than 50,000 nuts. Armed with a chisel-like beak, woodpeckers have no trouble opening their wooden pantry full of acorns. And neither would a collector in California. Humans love eating nuts. And over the years, we've created ingenious ways to open their shells. Hal Davis has collected most of them. Hal started collecting in 1953 and accumulated several thousand different nutcrackers. once admitted he was completely cracked on crackers. But one thing he didn't have was the beak of an acorn woodpecker. This is the perfect way to open a massive hoard of nuts. Our next contender also stashes away food to survive the cold, but instead of using a tree for storage, it uses a deep freeze.
while our last two contenders hoarded a treasure trove of nuts and worms. Still to come is a man that unearthed a gold nugget weighing as much as a 10-year-old boy. And later, we'll meet a crazy kleptomaniac with a thing for cutlery. That's next on Animal Planet. Number three. Living high above the Arctic Circle, there's not a great deal to collect, unless you're into ice. And there's even less to eat, unless you're an Arctic fox. Unlike other small mammals up here, the fox doesn't hibernate through winter, nor does it rely on huge layers of fat as an energy source. Instead, it survives by eating food it collected prior to the arrival of snow. During the summer, breeding snow geese are an attractive target for a hungry thief. And this fox is having its eggs to go. Arctic fox is number three in the countdown because it adds the egg to its collection of buried food. One research team unearthed a fox cache containing about a dozen eggs, four rabbits, and 38 birds. Arctic foxes have hundreds of these secret pantries scattered across their 20 square mile territory. The Arctic fox marks its cache with scent, so when the snows return, the fox can sniff out its collection of emergency food supplies. It's lucky the fox isn't fussy. After a few weeks underground, its cache can be a little rotten and very crunchy. It takes a good memory and a keen sense of smell to find frozen treasures in this empty wilderness. Lacking the super senses of the Arctic fox, humans rely on a machine to find buried treasures. These are metalheads. They're collectors that use metal detectors to locate objects beneath the ground. Originally invented to help soldiers clear landmines, the machine picks up the electrical and magnetic fields of buried metal objects. Usually collectors will find little of any significant value. However, back in 1980, an Australian man struck it rich. This is a 60-pound gold nugget. It was found buried six inches below ground and was appraised at more than a million dollars, which is far more than anyone would pay for the buried treasure of an Arctic fox. In this extreme environment, the fox can't afford to be fussy. It stocks its frozen pantry with anything from feathers to muskox droppings. At least the collection of our next contender is aesthetically far more pleasing. Number two. In the forests of Australia, our next crazy collector has a knack for turning trash into treasure.
That arch of straw is his bower, which is why he's called a bower bird. Male bower birds are fanatical home decorators. They collect all kinds of objects to create a love nest, because a male's attractiveness depends on the size and quality of his collection. This male not only collects glass, but green fruit, white rocks, and bleached bones. Various bowerbird species collect different objects. The satin bowerbird isn't fussy. He'll collect anything, as long as it's blue. A potential mate will cast a critical eye over the male's collection. Blue is definitely the female's favorite color. Some studies show the male selects objects to match his own blue plumage. And thanks to human litter bugs, there are plenty of materials to choose from. But this bird isn't the only artist working with trash. These structures are the human equivalent of the bower bird's love shack. Welcome to the Sculpture Garden of the San Francisco Recycling and Disposal Company. The city disposes of 25,000 tons of trash every day. More than 60% of the garbage is recycled, and some of it becomes art. Every year, a group of artists is given six months to collect junk and turn it into something beautiful. Rifling through rubbish may not seem glamorous, but the participants in the program have other reasons for being involved. As artist in residence, Kim Weller explains. Yeah, I've been a collector since I can remember, and my mom used to take me around to garage sales all the time growing up, and I just thought it was really fascinating. The Artist in Residence program receives 24-hour access to the materials, a monthly stipend, and access to a well-equipped studio. My idea was to show that I could find these used, discarded materials and create something that didn't look like I just pulled it from the dump site. Kim's work is inspired by comic books, and eventually she'll complete six large sculptures for an exhibition. It's all part of the company's aim to inspire people to recycle and conserve natural resources by learning from these human bower birds. After all, these crazy collectors are experts at recycling our rubbish and turning it into eye-catching displays. Male bower birds are number two in the countdown because they may spend up to 10 months rearranging their creations. However, that's a blink of an eye compared to the length of time spent on the constructions of the most extreme collector in the countdown. We've seen the nine contenders, they're nature's craziest collectors. Only one animal hoards a stranger's stash. It's number one, and it's coming up next on Animal Planet. Number one. 
To find the countdown's craziest collector, we're heading into the heart of the American desert. It lives surrounded by its remarkable collection, often hidden deep within caves. Meet the pack rat. This small desert rodent is famous for collecting a variety of objects near its nest. Pieces of plant, rocks, bones, or even dung. The pack rat will take them home and add them to the tangled fortress called a midden. Held together by organic glue made from the pack rat's urine, the midden is a refuge from predators and the extreme temperatures found in the desert. It's amazing what you can find in a pack rat's midden. It's a popular superstition that the pack rat is a fair trader. In some places, it's even called the trade rat because if it steals something, it'll usually leave something behind in its place. When it's carrying one trophy, the rat may see another that's more attractive. Since it can't carry both, it has to put down the first to pick up the second. In the past, many miners woke to find they were left with a stick instead of a wristwatch or a spoon. Generations of pack rats can live in the same area, building huge middens five feet tall and ten feet wide. No wonder object hoarding humans are often called pack rats. One of the most amazing human collectors built his very own midden in the heart of Los Angeles. In 1921, a humble Italian immigrant named Simon Rodia purchased a small house in the Watts district and started collecting thousands of pieces of broken bottles, tiles, seashells, corn cobs, and even a pair of women's boots. Fortunately, this human pack rat used concrete instead of urine to bind everything onto the sculptural towers soaring 100 feet high. He spent more than 33 years creating what's now called the Watts Junk Towers, as curator for the Los Angeles Cultural Affairs Department, Jeffrey Herr explains. What you're seeing today is sort of the ultimate backyard do-it-yourself project. This was the backyard of his house. And what he did was he took iron rebar, he took concrete, and he took an enormous amount of the detritus of, of everyday living. While this looks random, it has a definite design. Collectors have something in mind. At some point during this period of building, he was asked why he was doing it. And his answer was, I had in my mind, I'm going to do something big. Well, he did something big, obsessively, but he did it. Now part of the Watts Towers Art Center, the structures are a lasting monument to an extraordinary collector and are likely to last many more years to come. But even these structures of concrete and steel will disappear thousands of years before the middens of a real pack rat. Pack rats are number one in the countdown because their nests are valuable resources. Their middens are often used by many generations before the pack rats abandon their caves and move on to start new nests. But the middens remain, often for thousands of years. Coated in a varnish of rat urine, the plant and animal material is so wonderfully preserved that it's opening a window into the past for paleontologists. Careful study of the plant remains in ancient middens tells us that the desert was a very different place 30,000 years ago. A 
analysis shows the ancient rats collected dung and bone fragments from long extinct animals like mammoths, giant ground sloths, and saber-toothed cats. These ancient giants are long gone, but the pack rat remains, despite the best efforts of modern predators. And it owes part of its success to the benefits of living inside its magnificent midden. Some of these urine-covered hordes are 40,000 years old and still going strong. And that's why, when it comes to crazy collections, the pack rat really is the most extreme.